All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about the watershed segmentation in OpenCV using Python. So we'll start off by saying what it is, why do we need it, how does it work, and jump right into a coding example. So by the end of this video, we'll see how we could get this image here on the right. So what is watershed segmentation? So it's a method of segmenting objects in an image and especially for special cases, as we'll see later, but these objects here are touching. So why do we need it? Um, like we were saying, the objects will be touching. So in this case, like we see here, a bunch of trees, they're very close by, so segmenting this can be tricky. So that's where, in some cases, the watershed segmentation can be useful. So this is a key part. And how does the watershed segmentation work? So for the full segmentation pipeline, there's a couple of steps that we'll see in the code, but the watershed um, flood filling part, uh, that specifically the idea is you can imagine um, if you look at an image and there's going to be valleys and hills, which the hills kind of separate the two regions. So you could imagine these are separate regions here. And if you imagine it started raining, then this would start filling up with water and it keeps filling up higher and higher, the whole thing starts filling. And then eventually um, there's gonna be some border that forms between the two uh, valleys and that's where the boundaries would be. Okay, so that's the general idea of watershed. And how we get these valleys, that's gonna depend on some, um, some of the image processing steps that we'll see in the code. Okay, so let's jump right into the coding. Okay, so as usual, let's go ahead and import our modules. So I'm gonna do import cv2 as cv, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, import numpy as np, and then import os. Okay, so we're gonna have our function here called watershed. And then we have our if name equals uh, main here. And then we're going to call our watershed function. So let's go ahead and read in our image, get CWD, and then image path equals um, os.path.join. And then this is going to be in demo images, tesla.jpg. And we're going to go ahead and read in our image, cv.umread. And we're going to pass in image path here. And we're gonna extract out part of the image where the trees are. So here we're gonna do image equals the region which we've defined as um, 900 to 1300 and then 300 to 900. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and get an RGB version of this because you know OpenCV the way it converts it, reads it, it's not the right channel order for uh, matplotlib. And we're going to go ahead and pass an image here and then cv.color and do bgr to rgb. Okay, so that's our image. And we're going to have a grayscale image here, which we'll just call image cv.cvt color and then image cv.color. And we have bgr to gray. Okay, and first step is we're going to do some thresholding. So but let's go ahead and do plt.figure so we can first see the image we're working with, dot subplot, two, three, one, and then plt.show, um, pass in the image, plt.show. Okay, so if I go ahead and run this, we shall see the image that we're dealing with. And we can also do cmap equals gray if we want to, um, see it in grayscale, okay? But that's optional. So here we have our image, and now we wanna do some thresholding. So um, in our new subplot, which we call 232, we're gonna, it's gonna have some return value, which we don't want, and then image threshold. So here we're gonna call the cv.threshold function and pass an image. Uh, the threshold value of 120, the max of 255, and our method is going to be thresh um, binary inverted. And if I do plt.umshow, 
pass in the image threshold, see map of gray. We could go ahead and see our thresholded image. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So what we're doing here is we want to do like an initial extraction of the tree, which is the white area. Okay, so now that we have that, our next step is we want to do this thing called a distance transform. So we want to find the pixel from the current pixel to the nearest black pixel or the zero pixel. Okay, so if I do plt.subplot 233, I'm going to call the distance uh, transform here using cv.distance transform. We're going to pass in. Um, or actually before that, so let's do a quick dilation. So that will kind of help with our processing a little bit. So here we're gonna call, um, we're gonna make a kernel equals mp.1s. And we'll pass in three, three, and then data type of uint eight. Okay, and then we have image dilate equals cv using our morphological um, topology type methods. We have image uh, threshold, and we're going to pass in cv.morph dilate, and then we'll pass in the kernel. Okay, so if I go ahead and plot this plt.show and pass in the dilate, if I run this, we should see the dilated version of our image. So, what this essentially does is you can see it's removing some of the black areas here in the leaves, and that's going to kind of help um, categorize the different areas. And sometimes they'll do a foreground subtracted from like sure foreground from sure background, um, because here the trees are, they don't have a very clear border, so we're going to skip that step. Um, so next up, we're going to do plt.subplot. Uh, two, three, four, and what we're going to do is play around with the distance transform, which, like we were saying, is the distance from the current pixel to the nearest black pixel. So we're going to call it this trans equals cv dot distance transform, and we're going to pass in image dilate and cv dot dist um, distance, and we could just use a basic L two distance. And for the max mask size, we're going to use five. And that's just with trial and error. You can play around with what works for you. And then plt.show, we're going to pass in the disk transform. So if I plot this, we should see like a heat map essentially of how far they are from the white area. Okay, so that's almost it's almost like finding the center of the different regions. That's what this function is doing. Okay, so next up is there's a function called connected components. And what that does for us is it's going to allow us to find the different regions and number them into different, uh, different areas using labels. So we have our um, disk threshold. We're going we're gonna to threshold it first. So um, before the connected components, you have to do some thresholding to kind of isolate a, a little bit. So here we're going to do um, this threshold. It's called this thresh equals mp dot um, here, or actually cv dot threshold. And then we're going to pass in uh, this trans and threshold of 15, max value of 255, and then cv.thresh binary. And I do plt.amshow, and I'll pass in dish threshold. If I go ahead and run this, we should see our image here. So it's kind of isolated a little bit more. And you can see the different regions you start forming. Okay, So that's kind of what we're shooting for. So now the next step is the connected components. So plt dot subplot two three six here, and the connected components we need to do some modification with the data types convert it into a u int eight. It's just the way the the libraries work. So it takes it in as a certain data type. That's why we have to convert it. So we have our dish 
this uh, threshold here that we're passing in. Missing a H. And what we're going to do is pass in to the connected components. And we're just going to take in the threshold values directly. And then if I do plt.amshow and we're going to pass in the labels, we should see the different regions uh, labeled. You can see it's different colors. So if I hover over it, you can see essentially the different regions are numbered differently. It's probably in the bottom. And then now the final step is to use this and run the watershed. So that's kind of the moment that we've been waiting for. So plt.figure, plt.subplot. Uh, so I'm going to call this one to one. And then labels equals, we have to do another data type conversion to int32. Pass in the labels. And then labels equals cv.watershed. And we'll pass in the RGB uh, labels, and then plt dot um, show, and then we'll plot the labels. Okay, so if I go ahead and run this, we should see the new mask. This is essentially our segmentation mask that is attempting to uh, segment the different areas. Okay, so that's what that is. Now to actually utilize that, um, what we're going to do is make another subplot here. Call it one, two, two. And what we're going to do is uh, take the image and where the label is negative one, that's where the edges are. We're going to change the pixel to 25500. Zero, zero. And if I do plt. Um, I'm show here with the image, we could see the, the areas segmented. Okay, so you know if I hover over some of the edges, these uh, blue areas are negative one, so you could see it does an okay job trying to segment the different areas. Okay, but of course this is a very tricky problem to segment, so you can see there's definitely challenges with this method, and that's why a lot of people end up resorting to machine learning and AI methods. Okay, so hopefully you got a good sense of what the watershed is doing and how it can be used for segmentation. And if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.